Es no es Cuidado mensa es Es no es Cuidado mensa es Es no es Cuidado mensa es And so see all of us There is no else without mental health. There is no health without mental health. There is no else without mental health. And so see all of us. There is no health without mental health. How are you? Good evening. Welcome to your regular Friday tonic. Your Friday, Friday tonic. Mind Matters with Dr. Nubi. My name is Dr. Olusheun Peter Ogunubi. And I believe we have a wonderful time to spend together today. This is Mind Matters with Dr. Nubi. How has our week been? Another week to celebrate you. You know what I do every Friday? I celebrate you and I inform you. The fact that you lived and you survived Saturday, Sunday and co. Till now, you are a survivor. You are a winner. Thank you for joining Aman Breaknack 007 Wando underscore Obama Pristine Fabric. I didn't see you last week. What happened? What happened? How are you? Topic underscore Sans. How are you? China Emilum 9291. Demitayo underscore 10. How are you? Rubies and Gem. That's my blood sister outside the country. Thank you for joining, ma. Eniola Goddess, how are you? Yes, the Archish Doctor is online. Tusha FM, my wonderful wife. Topic Sans, how are you? She underscore Echo, Sedo DG, Jesus Lady 2000, Gloid. Thank you. Oh, network was so bad last week. Hey, yeah, it's all right. I'm actually in a very relaxed environment now. I know you can see my cheeks. I told you that I work and at the same time I do what? I rest. <laughs> I work and I rest. So this is one of the ways that I try as much as possible to distress. I'm in one beautiful hotel. I won't tell you the place, but it's a nice hotel and I'm just trying to distress. DE, the stress. Yeah, so today's topic we'll be looking at the frustration in the youth. How to overcome frustrations in the youth, the present day generation, the Sorosoke generation, the frustration. How to overcome because before you know it, everybody's just dying. Any small thing, suicide. People are frustrated. Why we cannot change the political environment and co? How do we help ourselves as youth in terms of career pursuit, in terms of what to do after school, in terms of, you know, starting off our lives? Before we used to talk about adolescent crisis, now we're having youth crisis, young adult crisis. People don't know what to do. Everybody is tired. So we're talking about that today. We're looking at the frustration around. This thing concerns you. Is that you have a brother? Is that you have a brother or you have somebody that you know? Let's even talk about our own Nigeria. And I know that majority of those who are joining, they have one thing or the other to do with youth what is going on you know i always say that this program is like it's train the trainer you will learn 
and whatever opportunity or whatever information you have when the opportunity arises you will use it to 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 you know to teach others a youth will come to you your brother will come your son will come somebody will approach you at that most church and co and you see frustration as educator somebody will you will see an opportunity and let me tell you something the way this present you the way they are they are thinking is quite different from the way you are thinking so it is important we talk about this so why i chill here at the, uh, by the poolside uh fresh air you know you can imagine the oxygen that this uh wonderful fun enough very cheap i told you sometimes you don't need to plan millions before you take a break take a break take a break with ten thousand era fifteen thousand era you can take a break and be in a place like this i mean you can as i'm talking to you now one fresh breeze just oh my god this is a good place for meditation. So it's not a matter of, oh, it's because Dr. Nubi has money. No, I said with 10,000. Ah, he didn't hear me very well. He just order for one or two things. They will bring it and you sit down. What do you mean? It's because I have money. It's not really, sometimes money does not have anything to do with distressing. You learn to overcome stress. It's a conscious effort to withdraw yourself from your environment. And to talk and to do things that we, you know, I can even sit down now and do the realization, exercise and co. You know, just sit down. And then, you know, you see people, the pool side, you know, life is beautiful. I don't want to die. There's no need to be in a hurry to commit suicide. All right. So I'm expecting someone to join me. I will be doing this together. He's a youth advocate. He has an NGO, he's a public health physician, and uh, he, 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 he's, he's, I want us to do this together. And next week, I will be bringing somebody, my friend Victor from New York, will be joining me next week, Friday. My friend Victor from New York is the chair of all the early career psychiatrists in the world. He will be joining me. And I and Victor will be doing justice to mental health, emotional health, stigmatization, and the likes. Okay? Beautiful. If you, can, if you cannot hear me, just let me know. If you can hear me, this is an outdoor event. So pardon some interference and all the likes. Okay? Beautiful. So, why would I expect the outreach doctor to join me. So I'm going to join Dr. Okeri Day now. He's a very strong advocate for youth, emotional health and co. And he's a public health uh, physician. So I'm going to connect with him now and then we'll be doing this together. I, I want to hear, I mean, I don't want to be the one talking and talking and talking. Let's hear his own perception about some of these things. Timitayo, all of you healthy living, okay. And invitation to you, the outreach doctor. Okay. Dr. Kane, okay, how are you? Yes. Can you hear me, Dr. Okay. Nubi? I know you need to recharge. I know you need to. Yeah, how are you? Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Well done. It's yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> but I'm not I'm not at the pool side. I'm in my I'm in my car. <laughs> I can see you in the car. Don't worry, I will send some of the fresh air to you there. Yes, please. I need it. <laughs> I do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Okay, I, I before you joined, I was saying something like your generation, because the truth is that you and I, we are not in the same generation. Yeah, true. Therefore, I mean, you appear to, I mean, I am Generation X, for example. You are probably the millennial 
or generation Y. Sorosuki. Yeah, the Sorosuki generation. Yes. <laughs> Sorosuki generation. Uh -huh. And funny enough, I wanted mm -hmm. to be part of you. That gen Sorosuki generation, I put it up <laughs> in my Facebook. I said, Am I still a youth so that I can join the protest? They said, No. That may have gone. <laughs> 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 it is well. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, by way of uh, kicking off this discussion, in my own time, my father will beat me. I didn't even think of anything called child abuse. They will ask me to go and bring my cane, and I will be the one to go and bring the cane. They will ask me to go and lock the door and wait. <laughs> They would tell me they would beat me at some particular time, and that, and I never thought of, you know, getting frustrated, dying, and go. Why is it that in your mm. generation life is not precious? You are in search of money, and once you don't get the money, or somebody wants to punish you, or you get frustrated, the next thing is you want to die. Why is your generation so quick to suicidality? What's going on? Hmm. Okay. Um, once again, thank you for having me. It's um, a privilege for me to join um, your live session. I mean, I've, I've seen the video. And um, like you said, the times have changed. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, before, when I want to travel from Lagos to Ibadan, or when I'm even traveling within Lagos, you know, sometimes my, my glass is down. There is no consciousness of the environment. But now, if I want to drive between Lagos, my house, which is in Surulere to Ikeja, there is a consciousness of insecurity. Ensure that my, my AC is working, my windscreen is hot. You know, that um, nobody just going to come out from anywhere with a gun to attack me or even to kidnap me. You guys did not have much of that in your generation. You know, so insecurity, for example, uh, is one of the issues this generation is facing. I just have to start with that, you know, anyway, you know, just let him know what happens in our mind, the consciousness that... Of, uh, I mean, facing this generation, you know, what are those traits? Let's start... And, and then you come out and then you're unable to get a job. When you see your mob, you know, buy stuff. I don't know okay, Can you hear me? Oh, you want to... Sorry, please, to cut you. Do you want to just drive away from where you are? It seems network is very poor. Okay, I think that is part of the that is part of the stress that we have. Um, yeah. <laughs> the reception. The, the recession is very bad. That's okay with me. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah, it's better now. Okay, so yes, you can see that you can see that everything is frustrating us. Even the network, you know, everything is just to have a wonderful chat with you now. The network is not allowing me. Those are some of the issues we we face. I mean, we know that this generation we are awkward, we are mobile, we are technology compliant, and sometimes you even buy data. You know, you pay. And yet, you don't get value for, for your payment. So, I was talking about um, employment the other time, unemployment issue. That, indeed, is a major challenge facing a lot of young people these days. You don't have income. And that's why you see that a lot of people these days are, are just trying to look for any means possible to make money. Um, the cases of kidnapping, for example, has increased. The cases of um, killing people for ritual. The case of yahoo yahoo. The case of internet fraud, all these things as a result of, of, of all, 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 all I would call the stressor. And those things, you, can, you want to link it to the socioeconomic um, situation of the country. 
as of now. Hmm. I, I mean, Talk I for now. I understand this. You have been able to enumerate the situation analysis. And at the end of the day, we are going to go through these issues and look at the impact it has or they have on our mental health. Because that's the most important look, I... thing now. The essence of mentioning some of these things is to look at the impact on our mental health. Okay? Uh... I've listened to you. I've listened to you. And you have tabled some of the reasons. And what you have said mostly is that frustration is a major thing. And because you guys are frustrated as much as possible, there is no so there is need to teach your. I mean, you guys, what we call resilience. Every generation okay. has its own thing. I just wanted you to mention it by yourselves. The fact that we mm. are in another generation, or the blue, uh, the baby bloomers, or the other generation, and called forgotten generation. You know all these things have been stratified. We have the forgotten generation. We have the baby mm. bloomers. You have you understand? Everyone mm. had his own challenge or challenges. True. But the truth is that they had what we call resilience, which is what mm. this generation lacks. Resilience. Resilience okay. is your ability to withstand the stress that your environment, you know, gives to you. And that is why, as much as possible, I always tell people that. To build resilience is not something you just wake up to do. And I'll be telling us how your generation can build resilience. But before then, let me also ask. I don't know if you can hear me, sir. About internet. And yeah, I can hear you even though it's still not okay. yet. It's not. Uh, but it's okay, is it better manage, now? Is it, is it, is it better, better now? now. Yeah. Okay, so now. talking about. I, I I I'm sorry, but I would uh, I would I don't also totally agree. Um, talking about resilience, I, I think that um, the, this generation, um, indeed has been resilient. Even though yeah, like you said, there are cases of people trying to end the journey. But people like me, for example, uh, I mean, I, I can share my story of how um from the get to how um for example, I had to you know strive through medical school. I remember writing jam like five times. Not because I was not intelligent. I mean, there was there, there are some times that I even got admission, but because I didn't know anybody, I was denied. Okay? And, and, and how I even, like I said, how I grew up in a street where there are so many vices, alcohol, um, drugs, and so many things. And yet, okay, today I'm a doctor, and today, like, like you earlier introduced, I have an NGO that, that goes around, you know, Helping people that really cannot access it, so I, I won't say I won't say it's totally right that um that our generation is not resilient. We are indeed resilient. As a matter of fact, if you, if I ask what exactly has the nation done for this for the youth, what nothing basically. Um, we 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 have to get accommodation ourselves. We have to pay the bills. We have to you know provide almost and there is even nothing basically that we are benefiting from being a citizen. So I will say that for. For the youth, really, personally, I, I think the youth are having to put up with a lot of issues, a lot of things, a lot. So I would say not everybody do, but a large chunk of people in Nigeria. For you example, guys, talk about the... sorry to cut you, but you, one of the things I've noticed about the youth is that you cannot delay gratification. You try as much as possible to want it now, now. You want Dr. to Nubi, you want Dr. To be, Nubi. You want... Do you want to blame us? Are you blaming us? You people are the one we are copying. You and the politicians, the people who have, have stolen the common weight of the poor man. I mean, because we don't even want people to look up to. I mean, the, the, the leaders, you can see how they are leading us. They, they, they've borrowed even our future. So, I mean, if you are delaying, what we are just delaying, you are delaying poverty, you are delaying, you are delaying stress. And the truth of the matter is, uh, the, 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 there's nobody we can look up to. Is he, is he at the level of government? Who, who, I mean, where are they? Where are the mentors? Where are the mentors? We we read the news every day. We 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 read what the newspaper. For example, the uh, consumer review is going on. We we see what is happening. 
So you won't blame us totally. There is nobody we are looking up to, whether in position of leadership or in authority or any way. So you, you really can't can't say that we can't deliver decision when we are trying to be like those of uh, those are, are ahead of us that are that are that are mounting wealth. So it's not really totally our fault. I, I won't take it from you, sir, respectfully that it is it is our fault. It is we are, we are looking at two people because at the end of the day, you you are, you are the one pressurizing us to be what we what we what we, we are not. Yeah. So um, I, I think you are, you guys also have to blame your generation, sir. Well, honestly, I listen to you with empathy. You are speaking on behalf of millions of Nigerians who are youth, and many of them are watching. Many can relate with many things. In fact, Ugona is saying something that there's no award in suffering, and that the silence I'm talking about is different from suffering. That's one of the comments you make. Yes, that, you know, I know that I know that many people can relate with you. I may play some devil advocate, but the truth is that I understand. I know many people can relate with the suffering. The fact that there's nothing to look up to. I knew I was going to be a doctor and I was so happy about it. And I knew if I read my book one by one with God's guidance, I'm going to get there. And today, here I am. But an average youth today, what does he look up to? Who does he see as a mentor and everything? I understand. Nobody. I understand. Nobody. I understand. But I missed all this. Will you say as well? that, to be sincere, apart from the fact that the future, the economy and coal, will you say with all sincerity that your generation lacks patience, cannot delay gratification, they want it right now and then, they don't want to wait for the yam to get cooked before they eat it, to be sincere. Okay, uh, um, for me to have a balanced answer, um, Dr. Nubi, I have to be balanced. My generation, for example, we have the internet. We are in the yes. technological generation. We are in the microwave generation. We are in the we are in the in the four G. Now we're talking about five G. I mean, at the speed of light. So you can afford to, and also don't forget that the the the, the life expectancy also for nigeria has also reduced over time so you really can't I'm, I'm trying to be balanced now not just to play devil's advocate on why a lot of a lot of us really are not patient i mean we've been patient enough i remember then in, in, in primary school one of the songs they keep saying is that youth or your children are the leader of tomorrow okay and i'm looking at where is it tomorrow i mean where is it tomorrow so if you're talking about being patient I, i'm asking we, we, we are having octogenarians, 80s, 70s, even 60s, still holding on to power. So if you're asking us to be patient, the question is, how long are we going to be patient? How long? We all know what is happening now. Somebody that is in his, in his 60s is already preparing to be president. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. I don't want to mention him. So if youths are also not given the opportunity to grow, to develop, to rule, in, 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 when when this current president was 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 president of uh, head of state, he was he was he was in his thirties. When Gowon was the president, he was in his thirties. But it's the same set of people that are still leading us, and you're asking us to be patient. So we and we agree that we are not patient, and the, the the lack of patient basically is not because we don't want to be patient, but because the patient is really not doing us any good. As a matter of fact, it's taking us back. It's taking us back. We we look at look at how well, you're talking about. Um, I had some some thousand of nerds in the account last year, right? If I convert that to dollar, this year I'm poorer. I'm see. I should still be patient. I will. I should still be patient. By the time this person is leaving, I'm sure there is really nothing. Okay, so these are some of the issues that is making the youth to just want to do anything because the economy, for example, is not doing well. The uh, security is not doing well. The env I mean, what indices do you want to use? So I think these are some of the reasons why the youth at all costs, really, the pressure is so much on them to just want to do anything just to survive. Survivor has become the order of the day. You know, so I, I think, it, so if balancing it, those are factors. I agree we are not patient, but those are factors that are pushing the youth all that, that 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 is making them not to be patient. Yeah. So, 
I, I, I appreciate your sincerity and this is also a note of warning. It's a note of warning to parents. It's a note of warning to seniors that the way Dr. Okay Day is thinking and talking, that is the way an average youth in this country feels. Yes. And Very correct. We must connect before we condemn. I have allowed him to have what we call catharsis, to talk about the frustration of an average youth in Nigeria. Catharsis helps the mind. And if going by what he has said, you realize that you pushing your son, that he must read medicine, pushing him, he must study a particular course, he must be an architect. Don't be surprised if this guy now begins to say he's depressed, anxiety, and cool. You must understand the peculiar nature of an average youth. There's nothing to look up to. They are looking True. at the surrounding and they are not happy. So therefore, they need to connect with them. They need to have a discussion with your young adult, with your son, with your brother. is very key. And our discussion should focus more on infusing hope. Our discussion should mm. focus more on making them, you know, guiding them and making sure that as much as possible, they are the center stage. They are not, mm. our wills are not imposed on them. Okay? This is very True. key. Now, Dr. Kennedy, in the world, in, in, in mental health balance, there's what we call internal stressors and external stressors. Yeah. To be sincere yeah. with you, some of the things you have mentioned, they are external stressors that even I cannot do anything about. Mm, true. And it's important that we know how to cope with external stressors. You understand? Can I... Before I mention some of the coping strategies, I want to be particular with you now. You, how have you been coping with the stressors, all these uncertainties and co? What are the things? Because we still need your sanity. Everybody cannot be breaking down, committing suicide, because the truth is that there's nothing you can do. External stressors means they are from environment, and there's nothing you can do about it. How have you been coping? We will learn from you, and I believe an average you that is listening, or we go back to my post and watch this, we also look at it that this is a young guy like me. And if he can still continue to cope like this, I, I, Dr. Kido, do you plan to die? Uh, no, I don't want to die. You. <laughs> so, I don't want to die. You. <laughs> and yet, you are confronted with myriads of problems that an average youth is going through. Please, True. how have you been coping? What are your strategies? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I, I like the fact that you allowed me to talk about a lot of the challenges that um, the youth are facing. And I have to do so as a typical youth. Uh, because, I mean, I'm not a youth in isolation. And I, I remember also saying earlier on that I grew up in a very, in a very toxic environment. And but the environment, even though it's a factor, um, did not determine my outcome. Okay, um, because I, I was able to um, develop um, some coping skills early enough. Now, I, I will share with you, there was a particular time that um, my fifth jam, I believe, because I wanted to be made a doctor by all means. And so my fifth jam, I was in the bad... You, your fifth jam? Yes, my because fifth I jam. I a patient who did jam twice and she's thinking of suicide. Oh, no, I wrote... Did the, I, jam up to five times? I wrote jam six times, actually, six. six. Times, and today you are a doctor. Yes. All because I wanted to be a doctor. That's, that, right. that, that, that no, was no, me. No, they, we, so, no, you, I mean, they've had six times. Okay, so, so, yeah, so today I'm a doctor. Now, what, what happened? My fifth jam, I was in, I was in a door. I passed. Okay. And then all of a sudden they introduced, um, one particular, um, criteria that you have to have distinctions A in all your paper. And then, of course, I went to a public school. I didn't have A's. I had maybe one B and then C's and all of those things. Suffice to say that I didn't get that admission, but that did not determine 
Mm. Okay, I, I didn't go to I didn't go to commit suicide. If I'd committed suicide at that time, today I won't be a doctor. Today I won't be on your show speaking and then I'm talking to people. So the first thing you need to know is that number one, do not commit suicide. Do not end it. There is hope. Okay. Now you need to first take care of your mind. First, you need to at every point in time make sure that the external environment or the factors do not get hold of your mind. Okay? So, how do I control my internal uh, environment, which is what I call my mind? Number one, I have the heart attitude of gratitude. I practice the attitude of gratitude. That means, every point in time, when the problems really are just weighing me down, uh, as a Christian, I just say, thank God because I'm still alive. Mm. Two, Tango because I am not paying for oxygen. Three, tango because I can walk. Four, tango because I'm not insane. I mean, it's a funny thing, you know, because when you look at all these things, even if I don't have money in my bank account and I'm not mm. paying for those things, it means that I have, I still have wealth because they say health is wealth. Okay, mm. so I appreciate God for all the things I have. I don't focus on those things I don't have because that's one of the problems. And that is what brings about comparison. Oh, I have a friend who I've just gotten admission and I'm still mm. at home. I have a friend who I've just gotten married and I'm look at me, I'm fine. And mm. I, I'm not I'm not married. Look at my friend, just got a job. And here I am. I, I got a two one, he got a pass. And then yeah, so I make sure that I do not compare myself with anybody. Trust me, sir. Once you start comparing yourself with anybody, what you have just done is to put an external pressure into your yourself. internal environment yes so what you do is you internalize the external pressure by accepting by comparing yourself okay so what did i do then like i said when i was writing down I, I i kept on telling myself that i know that there is hope i know that tomorrow that is the power of positive confession it works interestingly dr nubi it works when you keep telling yourself that my tomorrow is better I can do all things to God that strengthens me. And I'll give you an example how it works. So when I went to write my next um, jam, I'd gone to Pidigui Ife. When I wrote my, my exam in Ife, it was an interesting story. There were over 5,000 candidates. In short, 11,000 candidates that came to write the exam, Dr. Nubi. Mm. 11,000. Trust me, I said, ah, me, what do I know? But something told me, don't give up. So I went in for the exam. I wrote the exam. They're going to be in short. I didn't even go to check the exam because I felt like ah, that exam I'm sure I will not pass. But something told me, something told me just go and check. It was that bad. I did not remember my exam number. Doctor Nubi, I didn't remember because I, I just said well, that exam was that low and behold, when I went to check the exam, when I went to check the mark, I just did not pass. I was on merit. Wow. I was on merit. If I had given up and I didn't check that, that result, Dr. Nubi, what would have happened to me? I would have missed that admission because I would have given up. So, mm. ensure that what the environment says is, is what it is. They are fact. Don't internalize it out by not comparing yourself and under, by having the attitude of gratitude. Always stand up for what you have. Last but not least, this is very, very important. Surround yourself with positive people. Mm. Surround yourself with positive people. Somebody once said that if there are four wise men and you join them, you will become the you fifth wise, wise man. Yes. And if there are foolish people too and you are wise and you join them, in no time you will become foolish. So surround yourself with positive people, people that appreciate you, people that help your mental health. Don't, don't be around people that, that talk you down. You know, mm. it, it looks hard, particularly if those things really are coming from your house, maybe your parents. But what you need to do now is just, just blank out. Don't listen to them. But if you have the power, choose people that you know have what you want to have, what you want to have. Associate mm. with positive people, people that help your mental. Let me give an example why that helped me. I usually like to get Bs, Dr. Nubi. When I'm writing I don't like As. I like Bs. But when I got to university, if I to be precise, I started working with people that were getting distinction. Dr. Lubi, in no time, my results jumped from B to A. Wow. Why? 
because I was in the right company. Right. So, for the youth, please, I beg you, if you work with people who are trying to cope with their stress and are taking alcohol and they are, they are doing so many terrible things or bad coping habits, before you know it, you will also start doing the same thing. But when you work with people of positive mindset, people who will appreciate you, people who will bring out the best in you, before you know it, that will also help you. And that is why today, by the grace of God and by the people that are assisted with, I am what I am today. At least I'm a doctor. You know, I went to medical school, leadership position. And today I look back to those stuff. Let me tell you the economy. When I go back to my streets, where I grew up in the Butemeta, Evans Square, all those places where they used to smoke it, boo. When I go back there, because I did not give up on myself and because I did not allow the environment to determine what happens to me. Mm. Do you know that a lot of my friends today, a lot of my friends who gave up on writing jam at that time, after that second of them, today they are street guys. Uh. They are the one running the Zanga. They are into drugs. I saw one recently. It was ashamed to greet me at the police station. It was, it was, it, it, I mean, it's, I was like, I said, thank God I didn't give up. You know, so your environment matters. But don't allow, don't allow your environment so determine. You. Yes, don't let, don't let the pressure enter. Yeah, that yeah, is bad. But trust me, there are still people that are genuinely making money. Paystack, for example, what's name now? I mean, they are making billions. Okay, even though Nigeria is hard, there are still people. So have that mindset. When you have that mindset that even though Nigeria is hard, you will make your own. Yes, and you don't compare yourself with somebody that you don't know how the person is making it. Okay, mm. focus on God or whatever it is Allah or Jesus you have. Focus and last but not least, try to be your best. Try to be your best. Try to put in your best. Anything you find yourself or your hand doing, if you don't, for example, if you're not able to go to school, you can use your ingenuity to start a business. And trust me, that business can flourish. I think I will just stop there in case you have any other question for me. I mean, that is uh, that is my own secret, basically. Honestly, honestly, I mean, looking at you, I mean, I've known you before, and I mean, till now you've grown. I respect you so much, and you know, when we were together in a leadership retreat, and I just said, you know what, not okay, it just be my life. Let's talk. But you know, you've blown my mind because many people can identify with your story, the story of somebody who tried exam, who held not from a very sophisticated boy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a street guy, you. Street I'm a guy. proper street guy. I'm a street guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a street. I'm a street. <laughs> and look at it now. So, you know, this is hope. You can't I'm gonna be sorry. I'm gonna be sorry. Let, I'm gonna, let, me, let me tell you a funny story. So, I was driving my family. I was in December. I was driving my family to my grandma's place in Ikurudu. So, when I got to Ajota, you know, my wife used to think that this guy is too shy. He didn't know that I'm a street guy. So when I got a daughter, I saw area boys like hundreds. You know, they were trying to rob people. And I just told my wife, please keep your phone, keep everything. So when they came, they say, hey, if you I just said, it was a tiny show more way that do me. And when I just went to my street, they said, ah, they started ailing me. Say, ah, I'm a do go. You know, my wife was just looking at me. All just the heroes sure that, that came. This is not all about Polish, Polish, Polish. Forget, you forget the package, you know. Yeah. <laughs> forget the package. And she was shocked. She said, ah, Sammy, you'll be a street guy. I said, forget. I said, I grew up in Nojota. As a matter of fact, I sold pure water. I sold ice water. I was selling her on this pure same street. Water. I did sold ice water. That's going to be, you don't believe me. A lot of people don't know these things. I, in short, I, 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 there's so many stories. So if when, when I see people saying that uh, this guy, you are lucky, I just look at them exactly. and if you know they how I... You are lucky is because we are a doctor. Uh, they don't know. So it was just God, and then I never gave up on myself. I wanted to be a doctor, and even though when I was having repeated failures, I did not throw in the towel. I was determined, I was focused, and I did not join bad gang. I have a cousin, Dr. Nubi, I have a cousin who was a very fine boy, who was, who was gentle. to me. I was very stubborn as a child, though. But trust me, he gave up on himself. When I saw him later, they've already stabbed all his face. He had joined a cult. And then they, they had had some machete cut, and I looked at him, you know, and I looked at the path that he told, you know, if you, if you've told, if if you do, if you give up on yourself, and you go in the way of the street or the environment, what they're saying, the outcome will not be good. Trust me. But if you if you stay if you stay true 
and you're optimistic. I tell people I'm optimistic, and you hope, and you, you, you put in your mind that I can make it, irrespective of the challenges, then you will make it. You will get, you will get to your goal. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. I mean, you have just answered uh, Ugona, Ugona's message. You say, how do you determine when to throw in the towel? And you don't just keep waiting in vain. So there's no work mm. of vain because it may just be when you're about to throw in the towel that your success true. is just by the corner. You said something Very true. at no point in time did you throw in the towel. At no at point all. in time did you give up. I mean, at all. Mean, and you're a living legend. I mean, mm. One, two, three. You know, people don't understand what it is to do jam. One, two, three. Ah, uh, is that true? You know, for every time result comes, and you'll be seeing some options. Go and do this one. Go and do this mm. one. Go and do this one. But you chose what you wanted. So if you are saying you did not throw in the towel, people should not say, eh, it's not your fault. It's because you have not been there. Please tell me. Mm. Do you know what it is for six years to be doing exam? And not pass, mm. and you are still at and, I, and Dr. Numbi, I was teaching in tutorial center. And you are I was at the was center. I, so when they ask me, when they ask me, ah, Dr. Way school, I will say I'm in the bad done. Where I'm still a jam bite. Imagine. I will teach some students, they will write exam, they will go to university. What are you saying? Me, I will go and write that same exam. They will they will cancel my in short, they cancel like three or four of my results. They will you know what jam we say they will cancel it, they will withhold it. Like three or four of those exams where we told. You so, know, so when they come and they say uh, exactly. Doctor Whisky, I'll say I'll say I'm in the inverse of a bad mm. because if they know I was not in school, they will not listen to me. It got a time that you it was shameful. Still, still at home. They will say, uh, you know, uh, uh, "Why?" Sincere, Doctor Kerry Day, this is mm. very inspirational. This is to mm. tell those who are watching that everybody and anybody can get to what he or she has aspired to get to. If they don't very give true. up, you understand? Very true. And, and, and I usually give the last 15 minutes to do realization exercise. This is quarter to seven. We started very well. Uh, you have a party word for your before you before you leave the the live. Why I now take them on what I call mindfulness journey and realization therapy. So is there okay. what last words? It's not your last word on that. But your final year for them. Okay, so I, I just want to plead with the youth, you know, um, the youth out there like myself. You know, some of us have refused to travel yet because we believe so much in what Nigeria holds. The future of this country is with us, and we must we must we must not give up on Nigeria. Two, don't let the external pressure, do not internalize it, don't let those things happening get into you make sure that your sanity is intact it is a sane mind that can get the work done and never 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 give up on your dream your dream is very valid just walk towards it and before you know it if you do not give up you will definitely achieve it like i did achieve my own there are still some goals i'm still chasing which i'm already achieving small small but i will make sure just like you will begin to do now we will never give up on ourselves and even on our country nigeria God bless Nigeria. God bless everyone that lives in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, it's nice talking to you, and I believe. Same here. Yeah, thank you so much. So you can also log out now, and then you will now join. You will watch why I take realization and uh, breathing. Exercise. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye, everyone. Have bye -bye. a lovely thank day. You. Bye bye. Thank you so much. So, folks. Uh, I know like goddess, thank you. And yeah, inspirational. Where there is hope, there there's life, there is hope. I believe as well. So we'll be talking about how to cope with the ties of our time. And we have been talking to the uh, to a representative of the youth. This guy is my wonderful guy. Anytime he sees me, say Egbo, Egbo, you know. And I found enough, I didn't even know his story, but you know, he's, he, each time I look at him, you know, it strikes me as someone very serious, you know, someone very lively, someone that you can count on. And I said today, join my life. And this is, I mean, you can see, he told us the frustration of an average youth in the country. And he was able to also tell us how he himself 
is able to navigate the challenges. First, he said he remained focused. He kept his goal. He refused to be on to be waved by the sea or by distractions. He also said that he had the attitude of he has the attitude of gratitude to thank God for the little things that we take for granted. And then he associated himself and is still associating himself with people of like minds. He associates himself with people that will shape on his mind, not the same people that will be running him down. Anytime he sees some people anywhere, ah, Nigeria is foolish, Nigeria is useless, terrible nation. You cannot get anything out of this country. This is a wicked nation, evil nation, useless nation. They should go and sell it and collect change. He will not associate himself with such people. But people that kept looking at opportunities, people that kept seeing opportunities in the land, people that kept saying, if Dan go take and make it, I will make it. If also can make it, I will make it. People that kept seeing opportunities, they kept seeing light, and they continued at it. So you must keep looking at those people, and you must associate with them. Another thing is for you to know that just when you're about to give up, that may be when victory is at the corner. So why give up? Why say because you have failed one, two, three, four, and then you want to get tired? Here is the story of somebody who did the exam six times. All those one has become story now. All those one, they have become what? Story. This guy is a physician. By the grace of God, is getting to the pinnacle of his profession, and no one will stop him. So this is to tell us that yes, we can. If we believe, we can. It's been a wonderful time. And I tell you, you never know what I'm going to bring next week or per week. But I've given you what we call a review now. And that is to tell you that I'll be speaking with Victor. Victor Sanchez is from New York. He's my very good friend. And we're going to be sharing perspective on mental illness. African perspective and European perspective. Is there any big, is there any difference? Maybe. If they are doing better, I'm going to learn from him. If we are doing better, he's going to learn from me. And it promises to be wonderful. God keeping us alive next week. But before then, I think it's good for us to do contraction and realization exercise today. Now, if you want to do contraction and realization exercise, there are different variations. But what I try to do is to contract every joint in my body. And when I say joint, you mean the neck, your shoulder joint, by bringing it together, your elbow joint, your wrist joint, okay, and the fingers, which we call it a phalangia and all those but all those ones are English. You contract them. So you can see, contracting this, Contracting the wrist, contracting the elbow, contracting the shoulder joint, contracting this, flexing your neck. And you do the same for your knee joint and your ankle joint. So you, you can do that now. So you close your eyes. This one is first of all contraction. Some of us, we do contraction together with breathing. No. Let us first of all do contraction. So you hold, you contract for some minutes. You can count one to ten. Having contracted even your knee joint and your ankle joint. And even the toes, you flex your toes together. And you are in that position. It's like you tighten every part of your body. After ten, you relax them. You will hear some sounds, some knuckle sounds. We, you know, you will hear some knuckle sounds. Then you do it again. As if you are, just imagine that you are trying to force yourself inside a box. Exactly. You know, when you want to force yourself inside a box, the way you will flex your knee, you flex your elbow, and you just Yes, you can't turn, and then you relax again, 
As you are doing this, you are increasing blood flow. You are increasing blood flow to every part of your body. It is when you have done this successfully now that you now add inspiration, which is breathing in and breathing out. So when you are contracting, you breathe in. So as you are contracting, you are breathing in. And then you stop by holding your breath. Then you relax by breathing out. And you relax little by little. Again, you breathe in and contract all parts of your joints. Elbow, wrist, fingers, knees, ankles, toes. Then you breathe out and you relax. Friends, this has been empirically tested to work. It is a very good relaxation exercise. When you are angry, when you are anxious, when you are in panic state, or you are worried, sit down in a place, tighten every part of your body, breathe in. Hold your breath. Can't turn inward. Then relax and breathe out. Do it over and over. For the last time, we're going to do it again now. I'm not going to talk, but I just want you to do it as I do. You're going to breathe in. I am going to flex or contract every joint in your body. We're going to hold that for like 10 minutes, a uh, uh, count of 10. You don't need to start saying one, two. Mm -mm. Just from your mind. Out. In with contraction. And hold your breath. Make sure you don't breathe out. Contract everywhere. I can't turn backward. Out. Some of you, you notice that you will sweat. See, I'm already sweating because I'm contracting. And I realize, well, you see, this helps you. When you contract, you generate heat. You hold your breath, it's not easy. Then you release. By the time you stand up, you will hear some sound. That is at the end of the day. When you do that, it will aid your sleep. You can't be contracting and relaxing and you'll be thinking. You can't be doing so. You, so it is very important for you to do it. So last week we talked about mindfulness journey to our happy places. Today we have learned about contraction and relaxation in conjunction with breathing exercise. I believe you will do this from time to time. As you go into the week, anytime you feel pent up or you feel that you are becoming dizzy and cold, just try to contract. Anytime you notice that you are having panic attack and you want to start breathing fast, try to relax. Breathe in and then breathe out. All right, today we're going to talk about how to cope with the ties of our time, especially as youth in this wonderful era, era of uncertainty, hopelessness, and cool. Because we know that 
these are external stressors. And the truth is that in external stressor, you cannot do anything about it. External stressors, you can't do anything about them. All you need to do is to adapt, adjust, and keep yourself alive so that you can navigate and float over. We've learned that frustrations should not set in because of failure. When you fail, it's an opportunity to try it again and again. And then we went on to talk about the coping mechanism that we should use. And finally, we did realization and contraction uh, exercise in conjunction with breathing exercise. It's been a wonderful time. Mind Matters with Dr. Nubi Peter. Next week, join me. I am my friend Victor as we talk about stigmatization of emotional illness and the things we need to know. I hope to educate. I hope to inform. And I hope to keep you celebrating yourself from time to time. Uh, you know what I always say? How time flies when you are having good time. Thank you for stay, staying and thank you for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. And this is the point I get to say bye bye. Remember, there's no health without mental health. So I say bye bye to you. Have a refreshing weekend. Have a refreshing time. Until I come your way next week, God keeping us. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Antonia, for 9507. Thank you, um, Lamp underscore. Thank you, Yes, yeah, it's Ali. It's Mercify. Thank you, Nama. Over my 2000. Underscore, La, Dr. Jumoke. Thank you for everyone. Have a wonderful time.